Hey everybody, it's Matt Shu from Upright Health and in today's video I want to talk with you about surgery for thoracic outlet syndrome. This is a topic that is pretty near and dear to my heart because I used to have some pretty severe problems with my hands, wrists, elbows, and forearms. I used to get a lot of numbness and tingling going down into my hands and I just couldn't get it to really go away. It would get really bad after computer usage. It would be okay for a little while if I didn't use a computer and then as soon as I did anything in front of my body my hands and everything would go numb and it was a really depressing debilitating time there were a lot of herbal things that I like herbal supplements um, herbal patches and things that I was doing to try to help with my pain I did all kinds of massage and acupuncture to try to fix the problem um, but it just kept coming back and I have solved that without surgery and I realized uh, through research that a lot of people are actually undergoing surgery to try to correct this problem. So I wanted to share some information about it and about the surgery in particular so you can understand what's really going on when you're thinking about surgery. We're going to be looking at three studies in this video and we will provide the links in the description section uh, of this video. So the first study was done in 2001 and it's a, a study that uh, claimed pretty high success rates for um, thoracic outlet syndrome. So um, they, over a 10 year period they looked at 23 patients who had the surgery. Um, only two of them had complications and 19 of 23 re reported full relief and the remaining four reported, reported only partial relief of their symptoms. The results sound really promising until you look really closely at the length of the follow-up period. So um, all of the patient responses were, were recorded within three months to a year after the surgery. Um, so you're thinking, well, you know, 19 out of 23 patients within one year of the surgery, they're all sounding great. That's a really great percentage. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, the problem is you need to actually pay attention to that follow-up period. And we're going to talk about a study that actually paid attention to that so you understand why. So I'll give you a, a quick synopsis. If you're following up in a really tight time frame, you're going to miss out on what actually happens over that period of time where you're getting back to doing the things you want to do. Okay, there's another study in 2004 that talks about um, really high success rate um, with thoracic outlet uh, surgery that showed basically 84% of patients who underwent the surgery, uh, the particular kind of surgery they did for it, um, they ended up with fantastic results. 84% had good or excellent results. Um, they looked at 176 surgeries and followed up um, at the two-year mark and 84% were good or excellent. So this sounds really promising um, and if I were looking at that I would say yeah that's that's a pretty good situation. It seems like uh, I should do that because it's going to make me feel better. Now the problem is how they classify excellent and good, fair and poor. So um, in this study they had these four categories. Excellent was basically full resolution, no symptoms, get back to doing everything you love doing. Um, good was defined as still have intermittent pain and it's possible for you to go back to your leisure or professional activities. And then fair and poor basically you had, you know, you might have gotten a little bit of improvement but basically you can't at all go back to what you want to do. Now think about what that means. Good is defined as you still having pain and symptoms but you might be able to tolerate them enough so that you can go back to your job, you can go back to the sports you want to play, maybe. That to me isn't good. Uh, if that's good for you then wonderful, enjoy it. But uh, I think if you're thinking good, most of us are thinking, yeah, getting back to what we want to do. Um, in this case, it's not that. And it's, it's, this is one of those instances where the metric for success isn't really well aligned with what most people expect when they see these types of ratings. Excellent, that's fantastic. Basically a 50% chance based on this study um, that you're going to feel better after the surgery and be able to do what you want to do. So this is the third and final study for this video. This one was done in 2005 and they were looking at 254 surgeries that were performed for thoracic outlet syndrome. Um, 
they had a long follow-up period, so they got to see what the success rate was like over longer periods of time. And this is where you really need to pay attention. Um, when they started asking patients, how are things going? At two months following the operation, the success rate was 87%. That's fantastic. At 12 months, it decreased to 53%. At 24 months, the success rate was only 45%, and at 36 months, it was down to 38%. So this study was looking at the long-term results, and what they saw was right away, there's an improvement, the person feels better, and then over time, that result starts to slide away. That's really important when you think about some of these other studies where they say, hey, we followed up within one year and everyone was doing great, or a lot of people were doing great. Over time, like in this study, over three years, you see a huge drop-off where you're below 40% um, having a, a result that's defined as success. Now, what does, dis, what does success mean in this study? Well, in this study, they actually define success as a greater than 50% improvement in symptoms as reported by the patient. So that means not full resolution. That doesn't mean that a success was you're actually getting rid of all the symptoms and feeling better and getting back to, to your life. It actually means you feel like you've cut the pain in half, but you might not be able to do the things you want to do. So 50% resolution, is that actually a success to you? That's something you have to weigh in your mind. For me, I don't think that's, uh, that's not something I would consider successful. I consider success being able to do the things that you want to do and do it without pain. In conclusion, if you are thinking about surgery for thoracic outlet syndrome or symptoms that seem like it, it's a really good idea to look at these studies and read between the lines and see what's really going on. Surgery might seem on the surface to be a fantastic idea if the success rates are so high, but if the success rates are being measured in ways that skew towards success, then you may end up being very disappointed by the result of that surgery. I hope this perspective helps you out, and I hope you remember that pain sucks. Life shouldn't. If you liked the video, don't forget to like, share, and comment. And don't forget to subscribe.